Um, but yeah, and whoa! <laughs> so we've got um, so we've got this uh, this Triceratops over here off in the distance, which is kind of cool. You can. Hello the world, Squirrels here. Welcome to literally my first ever recorded episode of an awesome new game, well, I don't know how new it is, but a new game to me called Imperion Galactic Survival. Seriously, seriously, seriously love this game. For all of you out there that uh, wanted No Man's Sky to be something spectacularly amazing with crafting and with space adventure, um, and were sorely disappointed, I, for one, was one of those that was disappointed. Not too, too bad, um, but I was disappointed nonetheless because I just felt like No Man's Sky didn't live up to the potential that it could have. Um, if you were one of those people, or like me, or somewhere in between, then Imperion Galactic Survival might just be a game that could satisfy that little hole in your heart that you were hoping No Man's Sky would fill. Um, Imperion Galactic Survival is exactly what it sounds like, what I've uh, described it as. It's, um, it's kind of this ma Minecraft meets... Uh, meets No Man's Sky, right? Um, so let me go ahead and show you the, the title menu here, the title screen here. There you go. We've got um, Imperion Galactic Survival, and this is your menu that's made available to you. And right off the bat, you'll notice there's this thing called Multiplayer. Multiplayer. Now, they don't have easy-to-make servers that you can host, um, but of course, using methods like Hamachi and other OpenVPN-type software, um, you can uh, you can set up like a local area network of some kind and uh, and multiplayer in that method, um, and that is kind of how multiplayer is set up right now. Um, no Man's Sky, of course, didn't have no uh, didn't have multiplayer, but uh, but I don't want to be one of those people that just compares Imperion to No Man's Sky. So I'm gonna try to try to cut it off right there. I'm not gonna talk about No Man's Sky anymore. I promise, no more. So. Imperion Galactic Survival is its own game in its own right with its own adventure um, But what it initially does is it sets you forth on a planet. You've got virtually nothing and um, And you've got to survive right um, just like in Minecraft you kind of start off and uh, and you've got to mine for stuff to, to gather resources gather materials craft things craft weapons craft armor and so on Imperion really isn't all that much different except for the fact that it's futuristic um, and you just crash landed from a space pod. So the resources available to you will be a little bit different than Minecraft, right? Um, and, uh, and with seven days to die, you're kind of set off and there is really virtually no explanation to why you're just walking around naked without any tools whatsoever. <laughs> um, whereas in this case, at least you have your space pod. You can get some resources from your space pod. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and you just kind of adventure off from there. You can get off the planet eventually. You can create a small vessel and get off the planet. It's really set up nicely for character progression and game progression in that right, um, in that regard. Um, I do want to mention actually that um, that I'm playing with something that I don't normally or I haven't normally played with in any of my recordings in the past. I'm actually playing with the Steam controller. Um, I will give my own review for the Steam controller in another video, but I do want you guys to understand, like, if you're wondering, oh, why didn't the cursor move so fast? Man, this guy stinks at playing with his mouse and keyboard. Well, it's because I'm actually moving my cursor around with the, the trackpad portion of the Steam controller. And if you're wondering why I'm using the Steam controller and not a mouse and keyboard, I am not by any means condoning one over the other or privileging one over the other or saying that this one's better than the other one. All I'm saying is that I like the comfortability of a controller, um, and I, I missed playing with a controller, quite frankly. Um, so even though I really do love the versatility of a keyboard and mouse, um, again, I'll do a full review on the Steam controller later, but I do like that a lot of that versatility I can take with me onto the Steam controller with the comfortability of a gamepad. So, um, so I just wanted to get that out of the way so that you're not wondering, like, why the heck my controller is, or why my mouse is, is being funky, or why my keyboard functionality is weird, or if I ever, um, am slow to hitting a certain key, it's because I'm still kind of grabbing around, um, using, uh, utilizing the Steam controller. So, let me go ahead and hit new game here, enough rambling on, um, so, uh, you, so you see your settings here. I'm going to keep it on easy just because I am still relatively new to this game. Um, I'm going to keep the preset to easy. Um, you can see the game name here. I'm actually going to change this. Let me change it to, let's call it Squirrels Alpha 6 and EXP for Experimental. Um, 
So I say EXP for experimental, not EXPF. There we go. Um, EXP for experimental because this is actually an experimental branch. So, um, so you can actually see in the top left here it says experimental 6.0.8. Build is 0995 there. Um, the stable branch of this game right now is actually Alpha 5. Um, so when, uh, when you see this Let's Play right here, the interface of the game is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to if you download the game right now and start playing the stable branch. The stable branch has a different UI, it has different game features, different functionality for various sets, but personally, I want to show you guys what's new and what's upcoming, right? Um, this is a Let's Play, I want it to be interesting. There aren't a whole lot of people doing Let's Plays of Empyreon for some reason, so if I'm going to do an, a Let's Play of Empyreon Galactic Survival, I think it makes sense to show you guys what's coming down the pipe, right? Um, and really, we've literally probably only got a couple more weeks Two to, two to four weeks max, probably, maybe even less, of this experimental branch before it goes stable. So I'm really going to try to get you guys out on um, these episodes in succinct, um, in succession as, as quickly as I can. Um, so that said, let's get into this. We've got the default scenario. You, you do have various scenarios that just set your character up differently in this game. Um, in our particular case, I'm just going to use the default one. I will be in survival mode. The seed is right here. Um, this is, of course, the, the, the way the, the map is procedurally generated based off of the whatever math equations they have for this particular game seed. I'm going to call it... Um, uh, did it not want me to type there? Okay. Apparently, the game seed will only take numbers. I didn't. I, I wasn't actually aware of that, so sorry for that. I was going to try to type in some letter characters. So let's do some random numbers, like four, one, seven, zero. All right. Cool. We'll set that up. The starting location is Akua. They have a couple different planets. They have Akua. They have Omicron. They have a few others. Um, I'm mostly familiar with Akua. It's a very Earth-like planet, so it's very familiar territory here. So uh, I'm about to hit start. When I do hit start, you're going to see a start crash landing when it loads. So here we go. Um, we're going to start in a space pod, and the idea here is that in our space pod... Actually, I'm going I'm to stop talking here just in case it glitches a little bit from the loading process. All right. So here we are, we are in a space pod, and the idea in this space pod is we want to find... Oh, it looks like it's right there, crashed cockpit. So there are various um, starter bases in this new Alpha build, um, in this new experimental Alpha 6. So I'm just going to aim my escape pod. You can actually aim it using your cursor, using your mouse or your trackpad or whatever you have. Um, so I'm just going to aim directly at the crashed cockpit so that I can go straight for a starter base. In this Experimental 6, or previous to this Experimental 6, you actually completely started without any base of any kind. So in this, you have a few different builds uh, that they have for starter bases, so that's kind of nice. You're not building 100% from scratch anymore. So there you go. Crash land in here. And we do start off with this nice little briefing. It says, Chapter 1, The Robinson Protocol. Message received. Initializi initializing restart sequence. Checking logs. Reason for crash unknown. Position unknown. Titan contact lost. So I guess Titan is some bigger ship, um, probably that um, that maybe we were obviously in contact with at some point, but now contact is lost. Loading failsafe data. Restarting an integrated data assistant. Success. Welcome back, Commander. This is IDA reporting back for duty. I am glad you survived the incident. My internal sensors indicate only minor damages to your suit. Well, that's good to know, right? Um, although your health status is within normal parameters, studies indicate that disorientation after such incidences, after such incidents, is to be expected. To assist you, I have created a list of tasks following the Robinson Protocol, whatever that means. The sensors of the escape capsule already tracked a suitable hideout close by. Of course it did. We crash landed near it as close as possible, right? In this crashed cockpit. Tasks. Check the loadout, equip toolbar, and we have all these various tasks to us. Mission details. I check the suit inventory. Some of the devices are broken, but those that we need are functional. I'll try to repair or reconstruct them as we go. Technical... Technical advi... Ad advise? I think it's supposed to say advice, so there's a couple typos it looks like. Technical advice for handle handling the, s the survival suit Mark II. Okay. 
The internal suit logistics system allows easy to adding or swapping items and tools. Okay, so that's a little bit of how to function, right? Um, so you see a little bit of your controls here. Of course, I've mapped them to my Steam controller, respectively. So let's go. Alright, so you can actually see on the right-hand side of the screen, um, on the right-hand side it says check loadout, grab items from the pod, um, and open your inventory. So I'm going to come over here, open up the pod, and you can see that the escape pod has a small med kit, emergency rations, and a small O2 rack, or a small O2 bottle, three of them. And then you can see what we've already got in our inventory. We've got some fuel packs, some purified water, some other rations, some antidote pills, some other med kits, and I'm actually going to put the med kits on my hotbar. Actually, I'll wait till I get the rest. Um, some 50 cal, 250, 250 fil cal, 50 cal bullets rounds for our projectile pistol. So I'm actually going to put the projectile pistol on my hotbar. I'm going to grab everything from the escape pod. And of course, now we need to open, and there's some really tiny letters up at the top there, some really tiny message. Um, so interesting. Um, I recommend adding some of the items from your, to your toolbar for quick access. Of course, it works just like most uh, survival games here, so I'm not going to try to ramble on too much for things that most of you are probably already familiar with. I do want to put the small med kit on my hot bar here. All right, and you can actually see my character here has his helmet on. If I actually hit, um, I think it's you. Yeah, you. Um, actually takes my helmet off. You can see my character here. You can create your character from scratch. I made him blue. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Um, but yeah. And whoa! <laughs> so we've got, um, so we've got this, uh, this Triceratops over here off in the distance, which is kind of cool. You can hold shift to run. You can, um, hit X to jump. And you've actually got, if you hit J, then you can actually turn on a jetpack. And you can see it in the bottom left there, your jetpack turning on and off. You've also got your health in the bottom left your hunger bar, your stamina bar, and your oxygen level. So pretty cool, pretty standard stuff, things that you would expect from a space-themed um, survival game, right? Um, I do know that if you guys are familiar with this game, you were expecting the escape pod... Oh, it already disappeared, nice. You were expecting the escape, the escape pod to have some, uh, some other materials for you, right? Some silicon, some iron, some cobalt, things like that. You don't get them anymore. I know, it stinks, but you don't get them anymore. So let's go ahead into this uh, crashed cockpit and see what we've got available to us. Whoa. And I fell. That's weird. The, the noise there is kind of going in and out here. Um, all right. So uh, there's got to be a way into this place somewhere. Oh, okay. I'll just dive right in here. So it looks like we've got a small O2 tank. What else do we have? It looks like there's something behind there, like a generator, or no, it's a fuel tank. Small O2 tank, small fuel tank, we've got a generator right here. Um, and you can see the descriptions at the top right of the screen, by the way. Um, what else, what else? There should be a few more things, I would hope. Is this a, a ladder? No, it's not a ladder, okay. Here's some stairs. Okay. I don't know what that noise is. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but I'm not really sure. Um, so let me see if I can head up further up the stairs. Oh look, a door! Alright, so press F to open up the door because the, the, the place doesn't have power yet. If you actually hit Y, oop, not Y, or not tab, if you hit Y, then it'll actually power on the base for you, but you do need to load up, um, you do need to load things into the, um, into the fuel tank. So, if you hit, what is it, P? Yeah, if you hit P while you're on a structure, um, while you're inside, encapsulated inside of a structure or a spaceship or a vessel of some kind, then it'll actually bring up this control panel which shows you various things about um, the thing that you're inside of. So I'm actually going to go over to this fuel tank here. Let's open up the fuel tank. I'm just going to double click on it. We have these fuel cells. So I'm just going to right click to drop one or two of them in here to give power. I want to save some fuel cells just in case I need them. So now we can actually see if we go to main, then we can see we've got a 5% fuel in here. And so now if I just hit Y, then it turns on the power. And it looks like we've got about 36 minutes, give or take, of, uh, of power right now. So um, so it looks like we've got a bed here. If you, uh, if you hit F on the bed, then it'll give you a stamina boost. 
Looks like we've got a console over here, which is just decoration. We've got a fridge right here, and it looks like we do have some food in the fridge, so nice, not bad, not bad. Um, and then we've got these storage containers over here, which houses a bunch of things that you used to actually get from your escape pod, which you don't get now be because now they've, you know, tried to make it to where you go to this, uh, to this crashed vessel of some kind, or this, this hideout. So we've got some, some plants that we can plant later on. Um, we've got a chainsaw and we've got a drill. I'm actually going to take the drill with me because uh, we're probably going to want to... Um, and uh, I need the biofuel too. That's what I was looking for. So the drill actually uses biofuel as its fuel source, um, as its ammo. Um, Anti-radiation pills and an EVA boost. And then we've got a core. So anytime you're making a building or a structure or a vessel in this game, you actually need your core to start it. You put your core into the starting block and then you can build off of that. And anything connected to that core is considered part of that particular structure. So that's how the game understands, you know, that when I hit P, and that it opens up this, uh, this control panel. Oh, it looks like it glitched right there. There we go. It opens up a control panel showing you um, what's in the particular vessel that you're in. So pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, now oh, we've got a ventilator here so we can get some oxygen. And now that the, the place is powered on, we've got automatic doors. Um, something new in Alpha 6, if you're not familiar, this blue uh, shield here says that this particular door, even though it's open, it's still blocking in oxygen that you may have in this particular structure. All right, so let's head out here. All right, so let me just show you the, the world here. We, oh, I forgot to take my survival constructor, dang it. All right, so the survival constructor is something in, um, oh look, we've got, oh, get, let me get off here. Um, we've got a couple things planted here. This, oh, dead plants, okay. That's great. So how do I take out the dead plants? Will let me? Okay. So apparently I can't plant anything. I'm feeling hot. Oh, that's because above me is the, uh, the growth light, I guess, maybe? Yeah, that's what it is. So if you look at the right, just below the, the mini-map, you can see your heat there. As I go underneath here, you can see my heat is going up significantly. Um, is there any kind of turret or anything up here? I don't see anything. So it doesn't look like there are any defenses, which is okay. So normally, if you're wondering why I turned on the base, um, right now, at least the last I checked, um, just because I turned on my base doesn't mean I'm susceptible to drone attacks. Whereas in previous versions, if you turn on a base, then, um, then very shortly thereafter, drones will come after your base and you need to defend it. Um, so in this particular case, um, I should be good. So I do want to, what did I want to grab? Oh, the survival constructor. So this survival constructor is how we actually craft things in the game. You don't craft them in your regular inventory, you craft them with a survival constructor. So let me head out here. You used to start with a mini bike, you don't anymore, so that kind of stinks. Um, so let me go ahead and look at the map. I'm going to need some resources um, because initially, initially we're going to need to build this thing up. We're going to need to build a large constructor so that we can build bigger and badder things. We want a mini bike so that we can travel to places better. Um, oh, magnesium deposit. Nice. Um, and I'm already level 3 because of these discoveries, so that's cool. So magnesium is what we're going to need in order to make, um, in order to make bullets. And if we look, yeah, uh, there's the promethium deposit. Awesome. Promethium deposit is what you're going to need to craft fuel cells to power stuff. Makes sense, right? And then up here we've got a silicon deposit. Great. Silicon is used for metal stuff. Um, over here we've got the magnesium deposit, which is used for bullets. Um, another magnesium deposit, nice. Cobalt used for miscellaneous things. Um, so sweet. So what we could do right now, if we wanted to, is I could use this drill and I could go drilling for resources. Two reasons I don't want to do that. One, it's really boring to record. <laughs> I know it's part of the game, but it's really boring. You don't want to see somebody just drilling all day, right? Um, second reason I don't want to is because um, because the game is really set up now to where we want to really look for, um, for places that we can loot. Alright, um, we've got a base. I don't need to build a base right off the bat in this game anymore. Um, whereas before, it was kind of a main priority that by day two or by, by day three, you were, um, utilizing a blueprint to build a base, which I can talk about blueprints here in a minute. Um, but you wanted to build a base, you know, within the first couple days just so that you had shelter. That's not the case anymore. I have shelter, so why do I need to, to resource mine on day one, right? 
So let me just go and uh, look around and see if we can't find... So I got some alien honey. Um, what is this? Is this anything? I can pick up some root. Um, so as you pick up things on the planet, um, you do gain a little bit of experience, which is kind of nice. So these things here are used for like coffee type materials, so they'll boost your stamina later. This right here is corn dogs. Corn dogs are nice uh, because they're just food. Um, if I bring up my inventory again, I want to show you something here. Um, each of these items that I just picked up, they're plants, right? They have perish time. So in this game, things do perish, unlike, uh, unlike Seven Days to Die, which I'm not used to in that, right? But I still want to pick them up, even though they'll spoil eventually. I still want to pick them up just because, um, uh, just because I'm going to get experience from them, all right? So right now I'm literally just wandering off in the distance, kind of seeing if I can come across some kind of POI, some point of interest, um, which will hopefully then uh, give me some place I can loot. And actually, um, let me continue following this thing on the right hand side of my screen. Um, so it says equip the pistol, I did that right. Um, let me look at this guy so you can read it better. Equip antidote, so okay, I guess I'll equip the antidote onto my hotbar so that it can says that I did it. Um, equip emergency rations and purified water. So, purified water and emergency rations. Sweet! Alright, now follow the marker. Alright, I already found the hideout, but, you know, for the sake of getting through this tutorial, I'll go ahead and do it again. Um, Alright. Activate the base. I already did these things. All right, so this is a, getting a little ridiculous here. So I really wish the the game again. It's an experimental branch, so hopefully when it goes stable, it'll be a little bit better. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually bring up our PDA, um, which has everything that we're doing right now. I already activated the layout, so hopefully this will let me just check these things off. Yep, sweet. I oh I did not oh I did fill the tank. Yeah, duh. I turned it on already. And I did check the equipment locker. So, awesome. Ooh, I can order a bike? Interesting. Okay. So I did equip the constructor. So let me go ahead and place the constructor. So this is something that might be a little bit different. So let me go ahead and place my, my survival constructor down. Alright, this is being a little weird here. Alright, I'll place it down. Now it says I should be able to order a bike. How do I order a bike? Let me let me read what it's trying to, to get across here. I don't know if it necessarily is what I think it means. No, cancel. Alright, so it's not being very descriptive. I was hoping that if I clicked on it that it might describe it. Order a bike. Hmm. Like, I know that this right here is the motorbike construction kit. Um, which requires a motor and pipes and cables and electronics and a steel plate, and then I can make a bike. Um, yeah, just because I turned it on, I still can't make that motorbike construction kit. So maybe that's all it means is to put those items in order in order to be able to build the motorbike construction kit, because even if I go to these other categories... Yeah. Alright, so, I mean, I need materials in order to do that. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pick this thing back up. Um, should be shift right click or shift shift F to pick it up. Can I not pick these up anymore? Left shift and F. Okay, there we go. That was weird. Um, sorry about that. That might have been a control and malfunction, but I don't think it was. Um, all right. So something else that's cool if you're not familiar um, in this new alpha release, you can actually mine rocks. So Usually, and you can actually see it, you can't see it very well on the map. Okay, this is... Alright, so this is trying to tell me everything that's been doing. So what you can actually do is you can mine rocks, and usually um, near the hideout, there's a big rock deposit of some kind. So you can actually see it off in the distance over there. There's a bunch of rocks. I'm going to start with this one. If I right-click, then I can move this to stone removal, and I can't... Oh, and I need to load it up with some biofuel. That's just R for reload. I can just start attacking this rock. Bam! You can see right here we just picked up five iron, five copper ores. So that's pretty cool. I don't need to go and mine a um, a deposit in order to get um, in order to get resources anymore in this alpha release. So that's actually really cool. 
So I'm just gonna do that and go ahead and see there. I've got some iron ore and I've got some more copper ore. Pretty sweet stuff. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Oh, and it looks like this flew all the way over here. Wow. And so I got some cobalt ore as well. So I mentioned um, that typically what you'll want to do in the first day or so is uh, pick up all this stuff and mine deposits so that um, so that you can blueprint something into the game. What I mean by that is if I bring up blueprints, which is this other thing right here, then you can see all these blueprints, anything with a uh, an SD card logo next to it is something that is part of the game. These are prefabs in the game, but what these are, if I click on them, you can see over here resources and time. These resources, if I put them into a in-game factory of sorts, maybe it's this online remote factory, I don't know, but you can put them, you can say, okay, I can click on this, say, to factory, and then I can drag and drop all of these types of items into there, and then I can click start creation, and in just shy of nine minutes, I would have this particular base ready to spawn into this world. So it's a really cool system. What makes this system even better, quite frankly, is the fact that you can utilize the Steam Workshop to bring in things that other people have made and put onto the Steam Workshop. So I actually have this Treehouse 1 by Squirrels. So this is a base that I made. Um, you can craft it as early as level 5, and it has these materials required, and in a matter of 16 minutes, I can have a base that I already did up in creative mode earlier, so that I don't have to rebuild this thing from scratch. So it's a pretty cool thing. I've got some other things in here that I pulled off of the uh, off of the Steam Workshop. Things like uh, the the Drill Sergeant, which is a cr really cool hover vessel for drilling. Uh, the Evo 1A was a base that I used to use a lot when I was starting off. Um, Cage848 is another great YouTuber, um, and he does uh, he's doing this experimental branch as well. Um, and so I just figured I'd download his base. Um, Bug Eyes is of course my dad. Um, you've seen me do co-op uh, sessions with him. He's got some stuff in here, so pretty cool stuff. Um, but unfortunately, what I've actually learned is that the uh, the blueprinting is apparently broken in uh, the latest release in uh, Experimental Experimental Branch 0995. Apparently, um, the blueprinting isn't working right now. The devs are aware of it, from my knowledge, and so hopefully in the next release, they will actually uh, fix that. So again, I'm just coming through here, picking up things. There we go. And the idea here now is, and actually on my Steam controller, I have like the left trigger for F, and I have it set to turbo. So if I hold down both, then I can very quickly do things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come through here, and I'm going to clear this, clear these stones out. I'm going to see what I can get. Um, what all I can get material-wise, I'm literally just wanting to mine these resources before nightfall. Um, so I'm going to mine all these resources before nightfall. You can actually see in the top right. Oh, did it. Yep, there we go. Um, you can actually see in the top right that I've got about two game hours or two game minutes until sunset. I want to try to not be out when uh, when sunset. For a couple reasons. One, just like in Seven Days to Die and most other survival games, bad things can happen when night comes, right? Um, so I don't want to be outside when it's nightfall. I, in addition to that, in addition to that, I don't like recording dark videos. <laughs> so, and I know, I know that's like a cardinal sin of YouTube. Um, you really don't want to record dark videos. And what I've seen so far in this experimental branch is that when night falls, it does get really dark. But what's cool is because this is a planet, um, because this is a planet, you can actually work against the sun. Um, so as sun is falling, you can actually uh, you can actually increase the time it takes until nightfall. All all you need to do is head in the direction of uh, west, right? The sun goes east to west. So if I was to just go west, then I would be running away from the sun, right? And I would increase the time it takes until sunfall or sundown. So again, I'm just really clearing this stuff out, and there's a bunch of aloe vera here, which is awesome because this is what you use to make healing stuff. Um, yeah, this is this is actually really awesome. Um, so let me actually oh I did I, I picked up the survival structure yeah so 
what I want to do is I'm just going to mine all of this stuff, see what materials I get from it, and then ultimately I want to make that mini bike so that I can go find points of interest. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Hello. Yeah. So there's a, there's a whole team of herbivores over here, and actually, so there's a couple different kinds of uh, animals on Akua. Some of them look like dinosaurs. These guys right here are raptors. And I think they're safe raptors. There are night raptors as well, which will chase you. Yeah, okay. These are safe raptors. Um, there are nighttime raptors, which are hostile. So you need to be careful of that if you're new to the game. And then there are these funky creatures over there, which are like really overgrown cows. Um, but they're cool too. Um, a lot of very peaceful creatures on Akuma, so that's not, not too shabby there. But at nightfall, there are things that do come out, so I want to make sure that I, I don't waste my time here. What kind of creatures are there? There are, um, there are spiders, there are plant monsters, there are slimes. Actually, slimes aren't really hostile to you. I mean, they'll attack you if you attack them first. There are night raptors, which are quite hostile. Um, yeah, be careful, be wary of those. Um, so I pretty much cleared that whole area out. Let me go ahead and clear this one out as well. Alright, let me see. Inventory. Okay, I thought I heard a noise. In games like this, sometimes noises really freak you out. So what did I get here? It looks like I got a decent number of magnesium, cobalt, iron, and then some silicon as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, let me see, where's the where's the base at? Here's the base, the crashed cockpit. So I'm going to go ahead and head back towards the crashed cockpit um, and hit up any stone along the way or anything I can pick up along the way. There we go. Let me grab this stone over here. Is that? Oh, I did. Yes, I did. Cool. Um, and then there's this stone over here. Again, heading back towards the uh, towards the place because I don't really want to be out in the dark away from home if I can afford not to. Right? There's this stone over here. Let's go ahead and head back towards the crashed cockpit. It's getting pretty dark. Um, I actually have a shoulder light if you press F, I think. Yeah, it didn't really help much. Um, but uh, I do have that shoulder light. Oh, something that's actually pretty cool in, um, in this latest release of uh, Experimental Alpha 6 is actually if I put my helmet back on and then hit F again, then you actually have, that's so cool, that is so cool, you have night vision now, so that's, that's pretty sweet, I'm, I'm pretty excited for night vision. So, no more incredibly dark videos apparently, I can record at night, but we are getting right up on the end of our time here, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the night vision, take off my helmet so I don't waste oxygen, and I think I'm gonna call it, oh, look, we do have a, um, an ammo box here, so I wonder if we do have some kind of turret on this base. Oh, dang it. Let me see if I can climb up here. Is there any kind of turret on this base? I don't I don't see a turret anywhere. Yeah, I don't see a turret, but... Oh wait, is that a turret up there? That looks like a turret way up there. Yeah, Sentry Gun 3. I guess I could have just brought up the, uh, the control panel and checked, but... Anyway, I'm going to end the video there. On the next video, I plan to uh, to get this mini bike assembled. If that means I got to destroy a mess load of rocks, if that means I have to um if that means I have to actually go to a deposit to mine, then I'll do that too. Um, but we're going to get the mini bike discovered and we're are built and we're going to go and actually discover some PO some points of interest across the the planet of Akua. All right. So, uh, hopefully you guys are excited about this Let's Play series. I am super excited about it. I really like this game. I think I'm liking it even more than Seven Days to Die. But don't worry, for those of you that are fans of Seven Days to Die, they'll still be that too. But hey, if you like the series, if you're excited for the series, if you like the video, um, you know, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. As always, stay squirrely. Catch you next time. Whee!